You know you're not supposed to put your elbows on the table, so you know it's serious. Your girl is back again with another story time of you to my channel hey girl hey and if you're a returning subscriber i don't even have to say anything because you know what's up i know what's up we know what's up and that's on way and that's on way that's on period and mary had a little lamb as y'all can see by the title of the video this is part two of the why he was so obsessed with me or he i don't even remember what i titled that video but this is part two of this video so if you haven't seen this video it's imperative that you go watch this video and then you come back to this video and i'm also going to link it down below before we get into this video y'all go ahead and like comment and let's go ahead and get into it y'all already know in order for any of my story times to make sense i have to give y'all a little backstory so y'all in the last story time we left off at the part where i was at my job i don't know if i told y'all the name of the club that i was working at that time but i'm gonna just keep it a secret because i don't know if i told y'all in that last story time but i'm working at the club and i'm a bottle girl and i told y'all um we named him side in my last story time Saad is at the club, his cousin is at the club, and his cousin wife is at the club, and they got a section at the club, y'all. So by this time, it's like 1 a.m. in the morning. My shift ends at 2 o'clock, and I told y'all, Saad is getting mad aggressive. He's mad upset because other guys are on my body. Like, I'm a bottle girl. Of course, I'm a, what's, how did, y'all know that little, um, that little trend? I'm a bottle girl. Of course, I'm going to flirt with my customers. I'm a bottle girl. Of course, I'm going to order you a double shot and not one shot. I'm a bottle girl. Like, I'm a bottle girl. I'm I'm doing my job, y'all. So I'm over there at this one table because this is a table that's paying. Like, Saad and his cousin, they got the special. At that time, um, I just I need to just go ahead and give the club I was working at a nickname. Um, we're gonna call them fish because y'all this is the same club that i did my um bottle girl experience about this is that club so i'm gonna also link that video here so i'm at fish and you got the special the, the two for 50 special y'all he literally got two bottles for 250 and in this table over here their tab is already over a thousand dollars so of course i'm gonna spend my time over here guess you my little boo thing and i'm coming to your table and i'm checking on you and your cousin and making sure y'all good but I'm going to be where the money resides. Like, this is my table with the nice tab. And they, they said he ordered and drank. So, I'm spending a little more time over there. But like I said, y'all, I'm going back and forth to side table to check on him and his cousins. If I see the drinks are getting low, the ice getting low. Like, I'm checking on them, making sure they good or whatever. So, I told y'all fast forward um it's, it's time to go or whatever Saad had already told me that him and his cousin wanted to go out after the club and like i said y'all i was already at the club i was taking shot with a few shots with a few of my customers so your girl was kind of up y'all i was i wasn't sleepy typically after work i would be tired because my shift in at 2 a.m sometimes i wouldn't get home until like 3 a.m because we would have to clean and sweep and wipe down and you know and help um count the drawers and make sure everything was good before we left but this particular day i don't know but your girl was on 10 like i don't know how many shots i had took but i was a little tipsy right when my shift was about to end so my shift is over um i go ahead and leave at that time i think fish they were still open to like 3 a.m in the morning so we getting ready to leave or whatever. And as we leaving, his cousin and his cousin's wife, they just like, Asia, what's the vibes? Like, what's popping? What's popping? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I just moved here. Like, I don't know. And then Saad, I told y'all, Saad, he basically drunk the two bottles that he ordered. He basically drunk those bottles by himself. So he is on 10. Like, he is a list. He's like, babe, what's the vibes? What's the vibe? We in your city. We in your city. What's the vibes? Like, and I'm like, First of all, like, this is not my city. Second of all, I just moved here. Like, I don't be outside like that. Like I told y'all, after work, I would literally clock out and I would go home. I usually don't be outside after 2 o'clock. I only stay out late on the day of my shifts. Like, I don't be outside like that. So I'm telling his cousin, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what the vibes are like. And I already told y'all, Saad, when he gets drunk, he's an aggressive drunk. Like, he's mad aggressive. And let me give y'all a little backstory. So he's a type of kisser. When he kissed you, he likes to grab. He likes to grab your neck. But because he was intoxicated, y'all, he was grabbing my neck a little, a little bit too hard. So he was, like, grabbing my neck, trying to, like, you know, trying to pull me and kiss me while we're walking to the cousin car or whatever. Because Fishy, they don't have a big parking lot. If you ever been out in houston nine times out of ten you have to park around like the corner from the spot or whatever if you don't want to pay for parking 
So we walking or whatever. The cousin is with his wife, and we're I'm directly behind him with Sai. And Sai, he keeps pulling on me like, babe, babe, give me them lips, give me them lips, give me them lips, babe. So I'm kissing him, y'all, but I'm like telling him like, calm down, like, like you literally you hurt in my neck or whatever. But at the same time, y'all, I am also tipsy, so I feel it, but I don't really feel it, cause my neck was he was really grabbing my neck so we walking or whatever we finally get in the car and when we get in the car um like i said y'all side he's on that drunk man aggressive stuff he keeps pulling me he's trying to have a whole make out section with me in the car and i don't care how intoxicated i am i do not like making out in front of people like i will make out with my man in public but i'm not about to make out with you while your cousin's in the front seat and they looking at us through the rearview mirror. Like at that point, it's giving freak show. Like I'm not about to make out with you in the back of your cousin's car, drunk or not or whatever. So I keep telling him to stop and the man keeps trying to make out with me because I said, y'all, he's drunk. So after like two minutes of us being in the car, we barely get to pull out of the lot. His cousin, I should just give his cousin a name. Let's call his cousin... Y'all say I love the name Day Day, but Day Day is just so fitting for these characters. <laughs> so the cousin name is going to be Day Day. And no, this is no Day Day that I did from a past story time. I did not date this man's um, cousin. Like, I don't, what's it, his cousin or his uncle? I don't know if I told y'all it was his cousin or his uncle, but either way, y'all, I'm using those two words interchangeably in this story time. So we're gonna call the, the uncle Day Day. So Day Day is like Asia, Asia, you heard of this spot? You heard of this spot? You heard of pleasure? And he like, he's pulling up on Google. Y'all can see Google like a spot that was near there, like an after hours spot. And I'm like, no, nah, I haven't heard of that. And here goes side in my ear. I'm trying to pleasure you. I'm trying to pleasure you. And y'all, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> do anything but laugh because i like when he said that i'm like yeah this man is past drunk like this not even drunk no more like this is y'all this is past drunk and i know his cousin cousin heard him say that y'all because he turned the music up after he said that in my ear he thought he was whispering it y'all but in my ear it's like yeah yeah, I'm trying to pleasure you. But out loud, it was just like, yeah, I'm trying to pleasure you. And the cousin immediately turned the music up. So I'm like, I know he heard this. So we in the back of the car just kicking. Like, if you know me, when I'm drunk or if I'm tipsy, y'all, because I was very much in my zone. Like, I'm not a sloppy drunk. Like, I wasn't, like, falling all over. I'm just real bubbly and, like... I don't know, y'all. I'm me, but I'm more bubbly when I get that liquor in me, y'all. So I'm in the back of the car, and I'm just laughing. Like, everybody is com a comedian. Like, oh, you would think this man was comedian because I'm kiki in the back seat. He's just like, bae, bae. Every other word, y'all, because I, like I told y'all, I was not his bae. We had only known each other for two months, and that was his first time coming to visit me in the city. And I told y'all, this man got a seven-day ticket to come see me because he was in... Y'all gotta watch the rest of the story, but the girls that know, they know. This was the only week that he can come see me and he was in pharmacy school at this time, y'all. So he wasn't calling me bae until he got to the city. Leading up to the point after him coming, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't trying to be, um, he wasn't really, I don't wanna say he wasn't claiming me, but he would call me with my name. He wouldn't say bae. So while he's drunk, y'all, my name, I don't, who's Asia? <laughs> it's bae. So he's just like, bae. Bay, bay, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. And I'm like, kee, kee, kee. Like, y'all, that's the funniest thing to me. And then I ca started calling him pissy. And it was funny to me at the time because if you know me, y'all, I have a weak bladder. Like, I have to pee every, let me, let me reframe that. When I'm on the lick, I have a weak bladder. I have to pee every five minutes because I know somebody gonna be in the comments. A hater gonna be in the comments like, it's giving you T.I. It's, and it's, it's never giving that. I just, y'all, when I drink, I am the first one to have to pee. Like, my seal breaks easy, and I be going to the bathroom back to back to back to back. So, finally, y'all, maybe like 15 minutes of being in the car, we pull up to Pleasure. And I didn't know that Pleasure was a gentleman's club, a uh, strip club, until we got there, y'all. Just simply, I don't know why I didn't know, because it's called Pleasure. It's 3 a.m. Like, what else could be open other than legs? Like, it, it made sense, y'all. But as soon as we get inside this, this gentleman's club, I have like a ah uh, like a like a old type of moment. I'm like, oh, like oh, okay, or uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just the moment I was having, y'all. So we get inside there or whatever. A lady comes up to us. She gets us seated, and there's really not anybody in there. There's like hella dancers walking around, but there's no customers. I want to say it probably was ten people max, and pleasure. 
and remember let me see four of them four of them was us it was um day day his wife side and it was me and it's like six other customers at this spot and it's a little small spot y'all it just wasn't a bunch of people in there and we're literally in the corner and we're sitting in like two chairs it's like two they had like movie theater chairs in there and this is important y'all because i'm gonna tell y'all later so they had four chairs right here so it's two it's a space like you could put drinks and like a table right here and then it's the other two and that's where me and Sa was at so we sit down and as soon as we sit down um another server comes up to us and she's just she hands us a menu and she's like can i start you guys with something why can i speak she's like can i start you guys off with something to drink and immediately i'm like water water because like i said this man he's past drunk and i'm feeling tipsy like i'm good like i i don't want no more to drink so i'm just like water water he's like nah i'll take two shots of henny i'm like we need water he's like nah babe i got one for you too and then he looks over at day day he's like day day you you want a shot of henny and day day's like yeah i i i'll get a shot of henny and i'm just like water like i said two waters just water or whatever and like i said y'all the girl is doing her job she want to make money so of course y'all already know she brings out the two shots when she brings out the uh two shots i don't what's it i don't know if we even got henny but i just remember whatever we had was nasty and i actually like henny so it couldn't have been henny y'all so she brings out two shots of whatever and then when she brings the drinks back she looks at um she looks at me and day day and i don't know why she looks at me and day day because I didn't want, I didn't order the shots or whatever, but she looks at me and Day Day and see the, the, the server knew side ain't had no money. But anyway, she looks at me and Day Day and she was just like, um, did you want to go ahead and start a tab? And then side comes out of nowhere and he's just like, yeah, I'll go ahead and start a tab. And he gives the server his, um, he gives the server his card or whatever. So she takes his card while she's sitting there waiting for us to order. I'm looking through the menu y'all. Cause I'm like, I told y'all I'm already past, um, like i'm drunk i don't need no more to drink so i'm looking at the menu i order some chicken wings and i think he ordered a few things and um the server goes away y'all and we just in the club vibe and like i said it was a chill little night and it was a whole bunch of dancers but it wasn't enough people there's i can i don't you know y'all know it's illegal to be post to post dancers I didn't know that was illegal, but it's illegal to post um, dancers from like clubs and stuff. I know people do it all the time, but it's actually illegal. So I'm not going to post the video that I have in here because we were recording that night or whatever. But literally, we're sitting right here. There's a table in front of us with the food. And then there's a small, this wasn't like a big gentleman's club, y'all. There's a small little the area for her to dance on the stage and there's the pole so she's dancing in front of us or whatever and anytime i go to the strip club y'all i'm not gonna lie i'm literally just there for the food and the vibes i have never gave dancers um money before like i respect the hustle but i just as a woman i do not get the ideology of spending my hard earned money like spending hundreds and thousands of dollars because you got booty cheeks like i got cheeks too like i Y'all, I have never, and I'm, I honestly can say I never will give my hard earned money to a dancer. I'm sorry. I appreciate the hustle, but that's just not me, y'all. So I'm in there drinking my drink or whatever, because he also did bring the water. I'm drinking my drink. I'm trying to kind of sober up, and I'm just like listening to music. And y'all, I'm dancing, and Day Day and his wife, they're dancing. They don't went up to the stage. They dancing with the dancers or whatever. They're throwing money and whatever, and I ain't gonna hold you. That little one shot of whatever she gave us, it started to kick in. I was already, already feeling good, y'all, but that little shot started to kick in before you know it your girl started throwing it back on side like i'm giving him a, a little private dance section in the area you would have thought we was in a, the lap dance room y'all so i'm dancing on him just and it's funny <laughs> y'all it's so funny because he still has these videos on me and i'm not gonna embarrass myself but i was literally throwing it back on this man off beat like it, it was so funny like the beat could have been boom boom and i was going like i'm literally y'all i'm literally like this like, I'm throwing it. This the beat, y'all. <laughs> I'm like. Y'all, I'm missing the beat every single time. <laughs> I was missing the beat every single time. When I post this video, if I'm feeling bold, I might add the little clip in me and they're throwing it back. Because he recorded clips of me. I told y'all, Sai was a social media type of person. Excuse you, sir. 
I'm recording a video. But y'all, Saad was a social media type of person. He wasn't posting any of this on his social media, but he would record a lot. Like just, I guess just to save it, y'all, he had all types of video videos of me when I was asleep. I think I posted that in my last video. He would screen record our FaceTimes and he would like post them on his close friends. Um, he would have videos of me in the car while I'm asleep. Like he would just record a lot. So the whole time, like while I'm dancing, um, he records the video of me in the club dancing or whatever. We're just, we having a good time. I'm not going to lie. Like this was a night to remember. I really had a good time. And when I'm dancing on him, one of the other dancers come. Cause like I told y'all, it wasn't, and it's crazy. I don't know if pleasure is just not a popping club in Houston. If you want an area, let me know if you've ever been there, but it was like they had too many dancers for the stage. Like they didn't have that many, they didn't have that much room on their stages. Basically, they had more stage than they had dancers, um, y'all, if that makes sense. No, they had more dancers than they had stage, y'all, if that makes sense. Like it was a small joint. So some of the other dancers, they start coming over there and they were trying to dance to me. So I'm dancing with one and then she starts to try to dance on side. And it's funny because he's, y'all, this man is past gone. I feel like if he would have had some money, he probably would have gave him all his money. But he's in the thing. He's just like, I don't got no cash. I don't got no cash. The dancer, she's like, ding, ding. And y'all, she points at the ATM. Ching, ching. Yeah, like we got you covered. We, we in the club. So I'm just thinking like he was just saying that because he really wasn't going to spend money on them. But y'all, why does this man decide he gets up, he goes to the ATM and he starts throwing it on the dancers. And then he even gives me, I don't remember how much money it was. It probably was no more than like $50 worth of ones. And for the people that don't like to put two plus two together to get four, he got the ones from one of the workers at the club. They exchanged the money for him. But y'all know if you have a whole bunch of crinkly ones, like it ain't no fresh, crispy ones, it be feeling like you got moolah. Like it was a, it was a nice little stack like this, and it was nothing, no more than like fifty dollars on ones, y'all. So I'm just literally just throwing his money like it's paper, y'all. It, it is paper, but y'all know what I mean. I'm throwing it like it grow on trees. Threw his money or whatever, and we all just we just having a grand time. Um, what happened? I think me and his day day. And his wife was dancing. Me and Day Day was dancing. I was dancing with the wife. I'm thinking like, I'm never gonna see these folks again. Like y'all, when I say I was doing a lot and it's crazy because like I tell y'all, I cannot dance, but when I'm drunk, I love dancing. Like y'all, I was missing the beat <laughs> on every song, but I don't care because your girl's having a time. Fast forward, next thing you know, it's like six, it's probably, it was like 6 a.m. in the morning, y'all. Literally, the sun is getting ready to rise, and I don't know how we spent that. Well, mind you, when we got to the, the pleasure, it was probably already like 2.30 um, in the morning because I got off work at 2, so I guess that makes sense. But at the time, I was just flabbergasted. I'm like, dang, it's 6 a.m.? It's 6 a.m.? Like, I couldn't believe we had been in the spot for that long. So we go ahead and leave out my house at the time. I lived in North Houston, y'all on the outskirts and this club was all the way down south. So the cousin took us home. It took us like 40 minutes to get home. I remember um, when we pulled up to my house, I was in the back, y'all, in the back slump. I was tired. The cousin woke, woke me up and then he had to walk us upstairs. Cause like I said, y'all, side was gone. Like this man was like black out drunk, y'all. So literally I, I lived on the third floor and in my last apartment complex, y'all, they did not have elevators. So his cousin literally had to help me get this man upstairs. Like I'm on one side and his cousin is on, Day Day is on one side and we're literally helping him up. Like I was drunk, but I'm not a sloppy drunk. Like if anything, I'm gonna go to sleep with one eye open. Like I don't, I'm not that type of drunk, y'all. So I'm literally care, helping him carry him up the stairs. The man is literally like... When I say he's out of it, he's out of it. Even that same night, y'all, this man didn't even sleep in the bed. I literally just, we literally put him on my couch and I went to go sleep in my bed. And then the next day, um, I woke up with like the, when I say the worst, the worst, the worst hangover, y'all. My head was hurting so bad. And we didn't wake up until like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And it was crazy because we went to bed like we left the um we left pleasure at 6 a.m didn't really get to the house until basically almost seven o'clock and i didn't go to bed because i showered that same night i really didn't go to bed until like 8 a.m in the morning and the next day i woke up around like 
two three ish like it was really late in the day and our head was like hurting i don't know why i kept trying to explain the severity of this hangover as just a headache but y'all my whole body was aching aches and pains like i was so sore i had a migraine it was it was terrible so bad like it was terrible we had the worst um hangover so even after i woke up y'all i took medicine and we both were just were in the house just doing nothing and watching tv and this is saturday i told y'all he was there for a cold week so i think he got there like on i think he got there last sunday or either on monday and at this time i told y'all i just worked as a bottle girl and of course i was doing like posting youtube videos and stuff for y'all but at this time in the daytime i didn't have anything to do i would only work at night y'all and i only worked at the club three times a week so boom we in the house and we're just chilling i got a hangover and it's probably about to be i want to say like seven maybe going on like eight o'clock and i'm just like come on like let's get up because this is your last this is technically your last day here um like I said, y'all, it's Saturday. That happened Friday night, and now it's Saturday, and he's leaving early morning. Like, he's leaving Sunday morning to go back to Orlando. Because like I told y'all, um, he was in pharmacy school, and, like, he couldn't not go to class. Like, that counts against him or whatever. He had to do all of his, what was it called? I don't know if you call it clinicals, but he worked at the hospital every day, and he would, like, shadow after the other pharmacists and stuff. So, boom. I'm like, yeah, look, like, let's get up. Let's get something to eat. Like, you know, let's get up and do something. This is your last day. So, he ends up getting up. He took a shower. Um, we end up going to, what is that spot called? I don't know why I can't think of the name, but I love, oh, Prospect, y'all. We go to Prospect Park. And I don't even know why I chose Prospect Park at that time because Prospect Park is a place where you're going to vibe. Like, it's not a good place to kind of turn down and get good food but i chose to go to prospect park y'all um we go to prospect park when we get there i order my six piece wings i had fries i order a drink he orders i think like a burger i don't remember what this man ordered y'all i don't, don't even want to remember him but anyway he ordered something to eat and we're just eating and the whole time while we're eating like when i say this was the worst hangover i've ever had like my head was literally spinning like the the whole time while he's there and I don't even, thinking back now, I don't even know how I even drove to Prospect Park, y'all. Because when I say my head was hurting for that entire day, my head was hurting so bad. So we're at um, Prospect Park. We're sitting down at the at this table or whatever. We're eating. Um, fast forward the whole time while we're eating. We're not even really having a conversation, y'all. Our heads hurt so bad. Like, we literally just left out because he was in town for one more day. I'm like, this your only, this your only little vacation. Like, he wasn't going to have another vacation until, I think... December and this was back in July y'all because he's in farm school or whatever so I'm like yeah like let's just get you out the house let's enjoy your time in Houston so fast forward the check comes of course he's getting ready to pay for the check she takes the check um the server comes back to us and she was just like it declined and when she said this I heard it y'all but I didn't really hear it because like I said I was out of it my head was hurting I had also asked him if he can drive us back to my house because after that we were supposed to go out and do more stuff to, you know to try to make the best of his vacation but y'all our heads like my head was hurting so the lady the service she's like the car decline or whatever so I'm like huh decline she's like the car declined and he just like really um try swiping it again and she swiped it and she's like i didn't it, it declined or whatever so he's going through his wallet y'all there ain't nothing in that wallet like he's going through the wallet as if <laughs> like as if he didn't just see that there was no money in the wallet like he went through the wallet and then he closed the wallet he opened the wallet back up and then he started picking through other cars but these weren't even like debit cards y'all these were like library cards like gift cards like it wasn't i don't know y'all it was just weird to me i'm just like you just look it's not gonna magically appear money like it's either you got it or you don't or whatever but i'm not seeing anything because like i said your girl is out of it but i'm i see everything i'm paying attention now she's like yeah um it declined so um he's just like all right give me a moment the server walks away and then he's just like um let me check my bank so he checks his bank 
and he's just like, bro, they got a hold on my car of $300. They got a hold on my car for $300. And I'm like, who? Who got a hold on your car for $300? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, pleasure, pleasure. That spot we went to last night, pleasure. They put a hold on my car for $300. And I said, a hold? Why would they put a hold on your car? Whole time, y'all, I'm thinking he's just telling me this because he really do not have it. Like I said, I already knew he was in farm school, even for him to get there. Like he was already telling me he wanted to come see me, but he kept it a buck, y'all. He was in farm school. He was living with his parents. He didn't really have moolah like that. So he should have never came to see me regardless, but he, he did. So I'm thinking, all right, he don't got no money, but he trying to put together a story so I won't be judging. So I won't look at him like he broke. So I'm just like, what? You know, I'm a, y'all, I'm a always play along with the story. So I'm like, what? They put a hole on your car. Who put a hole on your car? He's like, pleasure. I'm going to have to dispute this. I'm going to have to dispute this. And then the whole time, I'm trying to like look. I'm not trying. He, he probably thought I was trying to look at his bank account. But the whole time, y'all, let me hold on. Let me show y'all how he was. So he has the phone. And he's like, they put a hole on my car. They put a hole on my car, man. And then I'm like, let me see. I'm like this, y'all. He's holding the phone. This is him. This is imaginary hands. I thought my nail broke. Okay. This is imaginary hands. And I'm sitting right beside him. I'm like, who? Who put a hole on your car? And he keeps turning the phone. He's like this. I'm like, who, 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 who put a hole on your car? He's just like, man, pleasure. And then he throws the phone down or whatever. And then he does one of these. He puts his elbows. Y'all know you're not supposed to put your elbows on the table. So you know it's serious. Elbows on the table, y'all. Head down. And then he's just like this. And I'm just like this because I don't know what you want me to do. I'm playing, y'all. I didn't do that. But I'm like already kind of laying on the table because, like I said, I don't feel good. But he's in one of these positions right here. And he's just like, fuck, man. They put a hole on my car for $300. And like I said, at that time, I thought he was BSing me because why I couldn't see. Like, why you couldn't show me that there was a pending hole on your car or whatever. And y'all can let me know. Well, should I speak too soon? I'll go ahead and uh, speak in hindsight, y'all. But at that time, I did not know. I was literally kind of just like, you are BSing me because you don't want me to look at you like you broke, like you don't have money or whatever. Like, just say you don't got no money to pay for our tab. And I don't I don't even know how our food came up to that much, y'all, because we literally had two drinks. I had six-piece wings. I had um, fries. And he had, like, a burger and something else. And the tab was $100. So I'm thinking, like, you really just, like – you you playing you playing like you 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 joking right or whatever so he has his head down <laughs> and i'm starting to get mad but i don't have the energy to show that i'm mad y'all because i don't i don't really feel good so he's just like man like yeah i'm gonna have to call them da, 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 da. he even leaves out of the spot and i started to feel really uncomfortable because i'm like you got my keys in your pocket. You going outside for air. Are you trying to are you trying to leave me in my own whip? Like, I don't know, y'all. I started thinking crazy. So I'm sitting in the booth and I got my head like I can't lift my arms up, y'all. I ain't shaking bitch. But I got my head like this, like this. I'm laying down like this on the table. He's just like, I'm finna call them. So they also they play um they play music at Prospect Park, y'all. So he goes outside, he says that he's finna call them. The whole time I'm in there, I'm texting my friend like Bitch, you ain't gonna believe this man. He don't he don't he don't got no money for the tab. Like I'm I'm already if you know me, I'm already thinking it's a game. So I'm talking telling my homework. I'm talking ish about him already to my best friend. I'm like, girl, he's telling me that they put a hole on his car. And she was just like, How much is the tab? And I'm like, the tab is only a hundred dollars. She's like, Well, he don't have more than that. How much is the hole? Like, we trying to y'all. You would literally think it was a subject because we trying to figure it out. She's like, how much is the whole? I'm like, the whole $300. Our tab here is $100. And she's just like, and he don't have it. I said, bro, he don't got it. So she's just like, wow, why would you come out there and you won't have it? So now we on the, I'm y'all, and thinking back, it's just like, Asia, you should have let the situation play out. I don't know why I'm quick to call my friend. I'm quick to call my best friend. So we're on the phone, and I'm like, yeah, girl, he said he don't got it. And then she's like, where he at? And I'm like, girl, he went outside. And it's crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm doing all of this in the fre uh, a freaking lounge, y'all. So he comes back or whatever, and he was just like, I'm going to have to pay you back when I figure this situation out because they don't have it. So I'm like, all right, I got it. Because like I said, y'all, I had already figured that he didn't really have no money. This is what I'm thinking in the back of my head or whatever. So I give her my card. We go ahead and pay and we leave or whatever and um the whole time on my way 
to the house, he was like talking about going to pleasure, saying like, oh, how far is pleasure? I'm like, pleasure is all the way down south. I don't feel good. Like, I want to go home. He's just like, man, I should pull up on them if I ask them why they, they got a hold on my car. Like our tab, why they charge my car for what we got and they charge me for this. They put a hold on my car. So at that time, y'all, y'all can let me know if you ever experienced this on my dancers, um, bottle girls, the girls in the nightlife service industry. You can let me know if that was a thing. I did Google it and it did say certain establishment establishments are able to put a hole on your tab that lasts like 24 hours um after you open a tab but i never checked my car after i have went out anywhere that put a hole on my car to know if it lasts that long i didn't know um clubs did that or whatever and it never happened to me so i'm thinking it was bs but later i did google it and it said certain establishments does do this but at the time y'all i'm thinking this man is playing with me like he don't got no moolah and he don't want to just he don't want to keep it a buck or whatever so we're in the car and he's just like yeah i'm thinking about going there and i'm like i'm going home and i do not trust you to come all the way back down south driving my car to go to uh pleasure if anything you could just call them he's like yeah they not open which i said y'all it's a gentleman's club they didn't open till like 10 p.m so i'm like yeah you can call them another time but i don't trust you to take my car down there so when we get back to the house um by this time it's not late it's probably like nine ten o'clock or whatever and we just watch a movie y'all and that next day um that next day what did he tell me he told me that he was gonna uber to the airport just simply because i was still when i said this this hangover lasted like two days y'all i was still not feeling good so i did not want to take him to the airport although i did tell him i was gonna take him to the airport like prior to the hangover and stuff so he ends up uber into the airport um like i said we did not leave off with bad vibes but i was kind of already i don't know y'all i was on the fence i'm like i don't think i'm gonna talk to this man after this just simply because this just made me realize like how life could be like how our relationship would be if we were in like a serious situation like you don't have money and y'all already know when it comes to me dating a man exclusively i want a provider like that's just the criteria like that's the bare minimum and if you can't even afford to buy me a six-piece wing at prospect park how we like one plus one is two and i can't see this working like you know what i mean so it's just not gonna work so this is what I'm thinking, y'all. This is what I'm thinking in my head the day that he leaves to go to the airport or whatever. And of course, like I told y'all, leading up to this point, all my friends knew that this man was coming to stay with me for a week. Mommy, if you're watching this, mind your business. Mind your business, girl. Okay. But anyway, all my friends knew that this man was coming to see me um for a week they knew that we had talked two months prior to this they 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 knew the whole thing i would send them the messages that i put in the first part of part one of the story time they seen all the messages they thought he was so perfect and such a gentleman and so charismatic like they seen everything so immediately when he left all my girls was calling my phone like asia how was he like how was it like was it everything you expected like was he a gentleman like did, like what happened what happened what girl they was y'all they was wanting the tea they wanted to know everything and you know at that time when something embarrassing just happened because that literally just happened a few hours before where he couldn't pay for the tab i'm like girl we had a time they said he paid all my one friend already knew because she already told me that i shouldn't even communicate with this man because she said asia i know your type i know what you like and if he's in pharmacy school and he's living with his parents he not gonna have he not gonna have enough in order to properly like date you like it's just not gonna work or whatever and i was like well we're gonna just we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see or whatever but i definitely wasn't waiting for this man but i told her we would see so she already know the first question she asked me to get on the phone she don't say hello girl he paid for everything did he did he, did he pay for I said, girl, yes, he paid. Y'all, I was so embarrassed. I was not telling my girlfriends that this man was, because at, at that moment, y'all, I thought he was lying about the whole, even if he wasn't lying about the whole, it's just the fact that you don't have, you don't, you don't have a, a hotel room. You know what I mean? Like $300, you can't even pay for a three night stay at a, at a Hilton. Like, you think I'm going to tell my girl? No, I ain't going to tell my girlfriend this, y'all. So, And I know somebody going to comment and be like, am I the only one that think it's weird that she lied to her friend? Baby, no, you're the only one that think this way. I do not tell people my business immediately when it happened. It's definitely if it's something embarrassing. So the way me and my friend's relationship work, 
we won't tell the situation at first. We might wait for a month or two months or however long it takes for us to get through whatever situation we're going through. And then we'll tell our friends. For example, my friend got back with her ex and she was telling me she was dating new ninjas. And then four months later, she's like, Asia, me and this man, I broke up five times. I was dating the same man and I don't get mad. That's just our relationship. When things happen to us, we tell each other on our terms. The girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. The whole time where they call and talk about him, I'm like, anyways, we had a good time. And they'll be like, was he tall? How did he look like his pictures? Because they, you know, I'm like, anyways, like, I'm trying to get off the topic of talking about this man. But they keep going back to this man because I, I don't want to say I hyped him up, y'all. But I definitely bragged on him and I told my girls about him. And anybody that I'm talking to, the same way y'all get these story times about my dating experience, my friends get them in real time. Like, I'm telling them everything, like everything play by play they get these story times in real in real life or whatever so of course they gonna want the tea when we finally meet because i done told them how everything worked up to this point but i'm really just annoyed like i don't want to be on the phone with nobody because your girl don't fell for the brokest one like i had a roster and i how do you, like how do you fall for the brokest one on the roster age? like how, how does that happen or whatever because i i can't hold you y'all i was thinking at that point after he left He's finito. Like, he's done. Finished. Like, I'm never going to see this man again. But, y'all, after that, he went home. Of course, he let me know when he landed. Um, he didn't give me back my money that next that same day he did not give me my money he gave me my money back on monday he did send me the a hundred dollars back or whatever so he sent me the money back and we didn't really talk about that situation again i did not bring up the hole in the wall or anything but y'all the story doesn't end here this is in july this is he came to see me i want to say this was at like let me i really need to pull up the receipts uh hold on let me see if i can find a picture with the date when he was here i don't think i'm gonna find a picture right away y'all but don't don't i'm gonna put okay so i found the picture and y'all clearly see the date is june 24th and i know somebody gonna be like asia did you have to scribble out that man arm and yes y'all is not about to find him through his tattoos so we just gonna pretend that that's a cast on his arm because y'all do it y'all will do it somebody already found my ex and they dm'd him like why i'm gonna put the, the i'm gonna put, put the correct date in here but i want to say this was at the end of no this was at the beginning of july started talking in may i told y'all when he swiped up on my instagram story talking all through may during my birthday talking all through june and then he was there at the at the beginning of july y'all and at the end of july um i was planning on coming to orlando and i told y'all that's where he, that's where he lived at so I, fam, fam you have a fam whose farm school is in orlando y'all so um I, we had already had these tickets this is before any of this happened we had these tickets to go to an amusement park and uh, Britt Bri, if you're watching this you she gonna remember this so we had these tickets to go to an amusement park i still was planning on coming to our going to orlando but at the same time y'all usually if i'm going to a city to see somebody that i'm talking to they're gonna get a hotel room like he's living with his mother so we have no choice but to get a hotel room y'all so leading up to that i was my mom was everywhere else i'm thinking like can this man even afford a hotel room like y'all my mind is just like <laughs> like can he can he afford like i'm trying to think of everything could he afford it because i'm definitely like i'm i definitely if i fly out to see someone i'm i wouldn't i'm not paying for a hotel room i'm not going half on a hotel room i think those are just basic things that you have if you're bringing somebody out to your city like i'm just not doing it and definitely when he was in my city like i made sure he was a good eye you know i accommodated him y'all house was filled with snacks spray for breeze and every, everything clean sheets like don't play with it so boom fast forward um i come to orlando and this was the second side of me just knowing like all right this is just not gonna work because i'm definitely not gonna wait for him y'all don't forget if you go back to watch the other story time you will see some of the screenshots because i'm not gonna hold you y'all i deleted them screenshots out of my phone after the story time but in the in those receipts you'll see him asking me like he will always say i'm not asking you to wait for me um because like i told y'all he was graduating in literally less than a year when i met him and he was basically saying you know i'm gonna be a doctor in a year like i'm in this place right now and this is my situation and i'm not asking you to wait for me and y'all by all means i wasn't because i was your girl was going out this was the year when i was going on like hella dates and i was seeing other men but i'm not gonna hold you he was the favorite on the roster. Like he was definitely at the top of the roster at this time. 
Although when I'm in, and also keep in mind, he also lived in a whole nother city. Like he lived in Orlando. So you think I'm about the long distance a ninja? Like if I, I can't throw that far. So it, it definitely wasn't gonna work or whatever. But at this time, girl, thinking back y'all, I'm literally in the Lulu land for thinking like, all right, maybe it'll work. And I think where my mindset was at this time was, I'm just gonna date him and I'm gonna obviously casually date other men. And if we still in communication and if it's meant and we're able to talk throughout this whole time while I'm talking to other people and I don't, um, you know, if I don't find my person or link with anybody or meet anybody that I really have chemistry with and connect with on the same level that I did with him, then, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pursue that person because why that person, they have their things together and that's just how life works. Like life doesn't wait on anybody. So I'm definitely not going to wait on you. I think that was my mindset at that time, but I didn't tell him this or whatever because the whole time I told y'all he was being mad, like aggressive, like, um, you got like, what would he say? He'd be like, you better not be on no dates with that. Like he was, you know, demanding that I'm not talking to anybody in the whole time. I wasn't lying, but I definitely wasn't just telling him the truth. Like I was omitting the truth. Y'all, he would say, are you going on? dates and i'm just like what i went out to eat but i left the part out that i was there with an anger you know what i mean like you know what i mean y'all so boom fast forward i'm in orlando or whatever he does indeed get the hotel room um you know we not staying at norris carlton so we not staying at no you know what's what's a nice hotel see i don't even know westgate or nothing we're not staying nowhere nice where was we at where was we at we definitely wasn't in the motel but we was in like a maybe like a 3.5 four star hotel i really don't remember what hotel we was at y'all I, I do not recall at all but he booked the hotel room or whatever it was a really nice room and as soon as we get, as soon as i get to orlando um my girlfriend Britt Britt, if you're watching this thank you fool. she picks me up from the airport i'm with her talking and then later she drops me off to this hotel room with him and this is on a weekend y'all so we're basically just spending the weekend this was already planned out like before any of before he even came to houston so we in this hotel room and you know i'm excited i'm getting my makeup done i'm getting ready you know we getting ready it's, it's crazy that i was doing all that y'all we were going to a water park an amusement park but i'm getting my makeup done i'm putting my swimsuit on i'm putting looking real real cute i'm putting it on or whatever and he's sitting on the bed and like i said the man is in farm school y'all so he has this fat this gigantic book in front of him and he's just like i really wanted to finish this i really want to finish i really really wanted to go on this date but i can't until i finish this so i'm like but the tickets are for today like the ticket the pass literally ended today he got us a pass to i don't recall the name of the amusement park y'all it was like i, I think i'm gonna I'm look for some receipts or whatever but anyway, he's sitting in the room or whatever, and he's just like, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to go. I have a test coming up. I can't fail any tests, and I'm, I'm not prepared for it. I'm not ready. So I'm bummed out because I flew out here to come see you, and you're telling me you gotta study. You do that Monday through Friday. It's Saturday. It's Asia Day. Like what? So he's saying this to me, but at the same time, I have never been. I've never been in a, a program like this, y'all. I, have, I haven't went through PT, PT school, so I don't I don't know. Like, I don't know how I feel. So I'm trying to be very understanding. And it's like, I'm like, all right, I feel you or whatever. And I'm just sitting there at the desk at the hotel. And then he's just like, um, you can you can take the tickets and you can go with your homegirl. You can just go with your homegirl. Y'all, don't judge me, but I went with my ex. I took the tickets and... If you watching this Brit, she was like, Asia, you, you're crazy for this. But like I said, y'all, I was had the feels for him. But at the same time, I was still living my life. I'm sorry. So I took the tickets and I hit my ex. Because y'all remember the ex from the um, How I Stopped. I think it's the, the story time about um, right before I moved to Houston and we had this big breakup. That ex, that ex in particular, I hit him. And he already knew I was in the city because I was posting in the city. But I hit him and I'm like, hey, you want to go to the park? I have tickets or whatever. And he's just like, yeah. And then I had my ex uh, judge me. My friend, I asked my friend, could she come pick me up? Because, you know, I just asked my friend if she can come pick me up and then drop me to my ex house. But I think she has to go to work or it just didn't make sense. It was, it was, it was something, y'all. 
anyway my ex ended up he came he picked me up from the hotel and we went to like this park wasn't directly in orlando i think it was like in Kissimmee or lakeland area or somewhere it was like 30 40 minutes away y'all he drove us to this park he took me to, i didn't like my swimsuit so he took me to this market we went to go change my swimsuit and i spent like five hours or maybe like four hours i spent four hours at the amusement park with my ex um after that he was like i told him that i had friend plans with my girlfriend because i have friends in orlando y'all because that's why i used to live after undergrad so i told him that or whatever and then i had my ex drop me off back at the hotel but i didn't i didn't have him drop me off directly in front of the hotel i had him like drop me off like on at like a different building i'm like yeah my room right here and i kind of just I walked y'all I walked all the way around because I didn't want him to see me get out of the car like I told y'all Sai, he was a little crazy he was very much he was crazy y'all so boom um the next day that night he was still studying like that whole day he stayed in the hotel room and he literally just studied away and the next morning it was it, my trip was over y'all it was um Sunday I was leaving out we did go get breakfast together and then I think we did something else together I don't even recall like y'all it wasn't it obviously wasn't memorable because i can't even recall what we did now but anyway um I, he dropped me to the airport i flew back to houston and i had some clarity like after that trip that's when i started telling my homegirls and my friend the truth they just like how was it how was your second link up with him and i'm just like girl he don't got no money like it's, it's it, baby it's not gonna work and they like what i thought you said y'all that's when i start girl i start spilling the team so I'm telling them like, it's not gonna work because this is not how I want my life to be like. At that point in my life, y'all, this was back in 2022. If I wanted to, I can afford to fly out to Orlando every month. Like I can afford to do that, but he can't afford, you know what I mean? He can't afford to come to Houston. Like he can't afford to fly out here to come see me. So it's just like, why are you talking to someone that cannot match your level? Like it's not gonna work. It's gonna be me putting in a lot of effort, me putting a lot of compromising for someone that can barely buy me a cheeseburger. Not, I'm playing. But y'all know what I freaking mean. You know what I'm saying? Like it would have been a lot of energy and a lot of effort on my part. So of course, if I definitely would have wanted to make that work, I definitely would have been able to, but as a, as a woman that knows her worth, it, it's too much. It was just, it was going to be too much. Like, I'm not about to, I only flew out there because he planned an event, he bought tickets, and he flew out to see me first, so I'm coming out to see him. But after that, I just couldn't see myself, I just couldn't see myself, um, I don't know, I just, I couldn't see myself doing it. Like, I, I literally, I just couldn't, y'all, but at this time, I also was still in communication with him and I'm gonna I'm just go ahead and choke it up to my toxicity y'all I'm not perfect I'm very but let me say this I told y'all if y'all remember the first story time if y'all remember any of my previous story times like if you've been here and you were day one drop a I don't even know drop a purple heart in the comment section but if you remember my first boyfriend I told y'all story times about him and I told y'all that this man was very um controlling very obsessive he was the type of person if you would wear a short skirt he would go tell you to change like he was the type of person or if I blocked him this man would pull up to my door like and if I blocked him I had to block him off my mother phone off my daddy phone because he was the type that was very persistent like he didn't take no for an answer he was he was you know he was a little manic like he was the crazy type like literally it would be times where I would block him and say I'm done and the next thing you know I wake up and he's in my living room talking to my father and my daddy don't know nothing that's going on like he was that type of person and they say the way you love and the way you perceive love is going to be based off the first man that you ever loved. That's why they say fathers have a very, very, very important and vital role in their kid's life because if your father wasn't there for you, now you may have abandonment issues and you may have attachment issues and you may be falling in love with the wrong man. My first ever love, my first boyfriend, he was, cra he was crazy. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was crazy. He was crazy. Like, I had toxic, toxic um, traits. So a lot of the things that Sai would do, it would, it would remind me of what my first boyfriend would do. Like, if that kind of makes sense, y'all. So this is why I personally feel like I was still in communication with this man. Although I just knew that I wasn't willing to, like, compromise because I need somebody that's, you know, equally yoked with me. But, but I stayed in communication with him. And I'm now, in hindsight, I'm chopping it up to he was like, I was, I don't know if the right word is trauma bonding, but I just feel like. A lot of characteristics that he had in him, my first love had those same characteristics. Like y'all, when I say be careful who you love and how you let it, how you love, because 
it's gonna take years to undo toxic traits like before like like for example with my boyfriend now like if i tell him like hey i need my space leave me alone like go to the other room he'll go to the other room and leave me alone and then y'all i will go follow him into the living room and be like so you just gonna leave me alone you just gonna you gonna respect my boundaries like y'all crazy stuff like that because i never had a man i've i've had but my first love i never had a man that respected my boundaries if i blocked them if i told them i was done baby they popping up and i thought like oh my gosh that's the love he loves me like da, da, da. or if i block one number he calling on five different other numbers like me at a young age was thinking that's the love but no i had to learn that that was toxic and i had already learned that y'all had already did my healing through that but side he was bringing that side out of me because like i said he had a lot of characteristics of my first love so the way he would get mad and he would swipe up on stuff and all his little crazy um demeaning and demeaning um demanding ways i didn't know but i was attracted to that i was i was attracted to it y'all so i stayed in communication with him so me and him, we're still talking. Like I said, we're still staying on the phone till like 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, I was at this time, y'all, I was I wasn't productive at all because like I said, I was on the phone with this man all the time, talking to him, like he's still sending me the messages. I seen somebody in my last story time or on that story time, you they was like, girl, you he was love bombing you, he was love bombing the hell out of you. And you know, he indeed was. But like I said, I considered that as like, oh, this is what my first act. The girls that get what I mean, you get what I mean. You have to unlearn your toxic traits, and it really takes time. So, boom, we're communicating, and everything has went back to how it was before. And like I said, definitely wasn't waiting for this man. I was still dating. I was still out talking to other people, but he was the number one on my roster. But he just happened and I had any money in his wallet. You know what I mean? So, one day, um, he texts me, and we didn't talk all day. And like I said, we will talk every single day. So, this was unlike him. Like, this was really, really unlike him. So, he texts me, and he's just like, um, hey, I'm sorry. I've been really busy with school. I got, out of the, um, I got out of the hospital late today, and I had a class, and that ran over, and now I have to study. Like, I didn't really have time to speak to you today. So, I'm just saying, so I wrote him back, and I'm like, oh, I completely understand. Like, you don't ever have to apologize for not being a available uh for me like school is your priority like to be honest you know what i mean like of course he, all he had to do was communicate that with me but if you in school and that's your priority i'm never gonna get mad at a person it may be for a second but it won't be for more than a second i'm never gonna be mad at a person for handling their priorities you know what i mean this that's his priority so I'm like, oh, you're fine. You don't have to explain anything to me. You you in school or whatever. Like, I complete, I, I get it or whatever. So we talked for that night. Fast forward the next morning. He usually texts me in the morning. I text him, y'all. Hey, good morning. Because he, he didn't hit me with the good morning text. So I text him, hey, good morning. Didn't get a response, y'all. Didn't get no response. Fast forward to that night. You must have had a busy day. How was your day? Like, hey, how? How are you? Like, how are you? Y'all, no response. So I'm like, damn, um, I really didn't know how to process it at that time. I'm like, damn, like, is he ghosting the ghoster? Y'all know, I tell y'all, if men, if I feel like you're not aligning with my future, I will ghost you in a minute. But your girl had never, I had never been ghosted. So at this time, I don't really know how to handle it because this is my first time experiencing getting ghosts in 2022. So I'm like, damn, like, not my deodorant. Got me looking like a goat. Ooh, ooh. y'all, my underarms is getting um chewed beef. What's that? Steak? What's that steak? Beef stew? No, what is that? Hold on, I'm sorry, cause it's stuck on my head. Um, how do you make um a chili cheese steak? What is that called? A Philly cheese steak is made with. What is that called? Is that roast beef? Y'all know what I'm talking about when your underarms be all wrinkly. It's the type of meat. I can't think of it, but drop it in the comments. I don't know why it's bothering me so bad. But anyway, y'all. Um, yes, I was trying to. <laughs> why am I like this? But anyway, um, I'm like, damn, is he ghosting the ghoster? Like, is this really happening? I had never been ghosted before. So I'm like, am I really being ghosted? But like I said, y'all, I I will never, I would never. I learned my lesson one time and all it took is one time. I will never beg a man to speak to me. And y'all know what they say. Once a man tells you that he does not want to be with you, 
after that and you don't listen like shortly after that he's gonna show you like he's gonna show you so i'm definitely not begging him or i'm not finna start triple texting him after the second time i hit him and he did not hit me back or anything i was more so thinking to be honest i wasn't thinking i was getting ghosted i was thinking like whoa is he okay did he die because he went to sleep without telling me good night like is this man still alive i was really i was thinking that because like i said we were going strong for three months talking every single day like i should have been on his payroll i would have been rich y'all we was talking we were talking so much so i'm really Oh, excuse me. So I'm really concerned. I'm thinking maybe something is wrong. But y'all, this man was viewing my, I would be posting and living my life. Because like I told y'all, he didn't put life on hold for me. Your girl still had oxygen. But he was viewing my Instagram story. So I'm like, how are you viewing my Instagram story? But you haven't responded to a text. So that's when I took, the, I took the cue, y'all. It didn't take me long. I didn't beg him. I will always tell y'all, it's best to walk away as a dignified woman than to beg a man he don't want you like you know what i mean actions are everything so he didn't text me back or whatever i saw that so i'm like all right he ghosted me but at this time you know i'm not letting nobody know that he ghosted me like i'm not letting nobody know that i haven't talked to this man for literally it's been like two weeks now all my girlfriends are still asking about him they still asking about other people that i'm talking to but i think they started to get the they started to get the point because your girl was going on more dates. I'm telling him about other ninjas. I don't really mention side as much or whatever. So they're starting to get the point. Fast forward to August, y'all. August was my homegirl Brittany's birthday. Birthday. Happy. Why well, am about to call, say happy birthday? Like, girl, it's freaking. What is this? It's February. Anyway, August was my girl Brittany's birthday. She wanted to go to Miami, and y'all already know I am good for a trip. All of her friends, um, her birthday dinner, and all of her plans and stuff got canceled. She hit me with the asia let's go to miami so i'm like let's go let's go let's go so we go to miami y'all this is like the fifth disclaimer for this video, but I got to give it to y'all because I know somebody going to hit me in the comments saying, if you wasn't invited to her birthday plans originally, why are you even going to go to like, I, I already know how it sounds. But y'all have to understand when you have friends that live in different states, nobody's flying out for a birthday dinner. So if one of my friends that live in Cali, if they hit me and say they having a birthday dinner, they know age is not hopping on a four hour flight just to go to a birthday dinner. You, you know what I mean? We have to meet up in other cities and meet up in other states to celebrate a birthday so uh, that's why i wasn't originally going to her birthday dinner because i i wasn't flying out for a birthday dinner but i will fly out for a trip and if y'all do not know um i didn't fly into miami my homegirl the one that i told you that drove me to that picked me up from the airport when i was just there in july to seaside she also lives in orlando so i was just like how about she didn't want to fly to miami y'all so i'm just like how about I go ahead and fly from Houston to Orlando and we drive down to Miami. So that's what we did. So I knew I was coming to Orlando, y'all. And I'm not going to hold you. The crazy Emmy, because I had his address, y'all. I knew his address. The crazy Emmy, once I touched it down to Orlando, because we were driving to Miami and checking to our hotel wasn't until like 4 p.m. And I got an early flight. I arrived at 10 a.m. As soon as I got off the flight, uh, mind you, I haven't talked to It's August now. This is her birthday. is in like the middle of August. So from July... The beginning of, um, I want to say the end of July to August. We haven't talked for like three weeks. Probably almost close pushing a month, y'all. But more so three weeks, y'all. We ain't talk. So crazy Asia, I'm ready to pull up to his house. I'm ready to pull up. Like, you viewing my Instagram story. We haven't talked in a while. But like I said, y'all, that was the crazy in me. The crazy in me. I was about to meet his moms, meet his dads, pull up. Like, what's up? Like, the crazy in me, that, that's what I wanted to do, y'all. I wanted to be crazy. But I didn't do it. I told my homegirl. She picked me up from the airport. I'm just like, Brit, I really want to pull up to this man's house. I just, I want to pull up. But I, I didn't do it. And Brittany, she be with the shits. If I would have, if I would have told her that's what I wanted to do, she, she, y'all, she would have took me. But I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I go down to Miami. I'll post pictures here. It's my girl's birthday. I even recorded a vlog of me in Miami. Y'all probably seen that vlog when I decorated the hotel room. I surprised her for her birthday. It was real, real cute. We had a nice little vibe. We in Miami. We on yachts. We turning up. Inside is viewing every single um, post. He's viewing every post. He's liking everything, but he hasn't said anything to me um, since, what was that? Since July, y'all. He hasn't said anything like we're completely ghosted. I don't know if ghosted counts if they... Is that still getting ghosted? Somebody let me know. Is it classified as getting ghosted if the person doesn't block you on anything? They're watching you, but they're just not speaking to you. I don't know if that 
is that classified as getting ghosted. But y'all, he was keeping up with my life. He was watching everything I was doing, but he was not, um, he wasn't um, texting me. Like we just weren't speaking or whatever. So that was that. Um, fast forward, I'm still living my life. It's September, I'm partying, I'm turning up, I'm living my life. Um, boom, 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 boom. Fast forward to October. I got, I'm living my life, partying, da, 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 I'm dating, I'm, y'all, I'm living my life, I'm living my life. Fast forward to November, I'm dating, da, 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 y'all, what is Asia doing? She's living her life, I'm living my life. 2022 was a year, I think I had, I had hella trips that year, we was outside that year, y'all. So your girl is just living her life, um, fast forward, it's December, I think, I believe it was December, y'all. He hits me up out of nowhere, y'all. He texted me and he it was basically a screenshot. It was a screenshot of him passing a, a vital test that he needed in order to um, graduate or something. It had something to do with his graduation, y'all. And he also texted me that he got a high paying job like he said he got a job offer and i do not recall what the job offer is i just remember he basically texted me and he said thank you for being like um my being support being very supportive during that time and getting me through like helping me get through like a lot of my studies and then he showed me that he got this high paying job um i guess i could say what the amount was y'all he just girl i don't know how i forgot to add this but he also apologized for his abstinence and why he went um, and stopped talking to me and was still viewing my story. And he, he basically explained what he was going through at that time. I'm not going to put all his personal business out, but all I'm going to say is he was going through a lot, um, obviously financially, um, with his family and with his schoolwork. And then at the end, he closed it off by saying he felt like he was not able to be the man for me at that time. So now he's saying that he got a job lined up and he wants to pursue me after he graduates. This is exactly what he told me, y'all. I had a job and they were starting him off with six figures. So I seen this message and it was just out of the blue. I haven't talked to this man in months. Um, like we haven't talked. I haven't said anything to him. He hasn't said anything to me. So you're sending me that you got this job and you're letting me know your graduation date is confirmed like you're graduating. You know, you in farm school, you got a job lined up when you get out, like everything is good. But at this time, so many months had passed by. I was definitely confused. But at the same time, I didn't have any hurt in my heart. Like I didn't have any dis distaste for him or hate in my heart for him. So I wrote him back and I just said, congratulations. Like at that time, I think I was, I was, I was, I had met my current boyfriend now. So we wasn't locked in at that time, but he was applying that pressure. And I'm, I'm on a whole different frequency late, uh, wave. So I'm not even, you know, I'm not even thinking negative. Like I wasn't thinking negative at that time. I said, congratulations. And I, I remember being with my current boo at that time. I'm like, I would I call him. I, I gave that. I mean, he wasn't even my ex y'all, but I'm like, my old ninja just texted me. He's like, what well, he texts you. And I'm like, he just texted me that he got a job. And then we're just, he's like, what do you want you? What did you say? I'm like, I told him congratulations. Like, good for you. But like, what is that going to make me do? I don't know what he wanted me to think or feel about him getting a job. Cause I never talked down on him. I never looked down on him. I just knew that we were in two different places in our life. So it just was not going to work unless I waited for him. And I'm not the girl that's just going to wait for a man now please do not wait for a man because you will wait for a man and he will get to where he needs to get and he will leave you for the next woman so if he's not ready if he don't come ready walk baby walk 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 girl don't wait so boom he sends me that um i congratulate him and uh i don't know i don't recall that we did any small talk if anything he probably said how have you been and i kept that sh I got to curse. I'm trying not to curse as much on YouTube, y'all, because they be demonetizing videos. But I kept it short and sweet. I said, um, great. I think I kept it mad short. He got the vibe that I didn't really want to speak to him anymore. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, you know, I'm in a whole different place in my life. Months has passed by. So fast forward. Um, um, I think like um, where am I in my life at this time? Fast forward, I know. I was, I had New Year's in New York that year. Wait, was that that year? I don't know, y'all. I just remember 2022 was a year where I was really out the country a lot. I was like going out with my man a lot. Like I, it was a, it was a, an abundance year, y'all. I was going out a lot that year. So I'm doing me, I'm doing my thing. Fast forward, um, 
he has graduated of course i see he graduated he posted his graduation pictures he see the post um i'm tr pretty sure i like to post i don't know if i commented on it but if i did y'all it was no hate in my heart i probably did congratulate him but i don't want to lie i don't recall if i commented on the picture or not but boom y'all that happens fast forward to that summer me and my current boo we're exclusively dating at this point your girl is no longer on the no longer on the market baby i'm put up on a shelf and i'm framed i'm framed like i'm i'm not outside no more <sighs> but after shortly after he graduated um i get a i get a cash app y'all i get a cash app this that didn't ha this didn't happen this happened not too long ago y'all which is crazy because now it's been it's been months it's been months that passed by y'all i get a cash app and the cash app is from side and it's thirty dollars and guess what the subject box read He's sending me the $30 to patch up the hole in my wall. Yes, girl. So that's pretty much how it ended out. That's what inspired this story time because I got that cash up from him. And I'm just like, wow. I left our situation right there in that cash up. I didn't like the cash up. I didn't reply back. I didn't request. I should have requested a hundred extra dollars. But the interest for all the time that passed by, but I still, I did not do any of that. I left it in the cash chat. And yeah, girl, that's the story time. I don't even know what I titled this video. What is that the story time of? I don't, y'all, I really don't even know. Um, he, how he became, he became obsessed and crazy shortly or shortly before he got to Houston. Um, I don't really even know what the lesson is in the story time. What is the takeaway from the story time? The takeaway from the story time is don't wait on a man. Do not wait on a man. Let people meet you where you're at in your life. I know I'm gonna get this comment because somebody comments, a girl commented on my one of my past videos and she was just like, Asia, this your third doctor you don't fumble. Why you keep fumbling all of these doctors? I'm just trying to meet one. Like she comments something along those lines on a video, y'all. And every time I see comments like that, I don't get offended, but it's just like, y'all have to think. That was the situation at that time. Like, if someone, if you meet somebody in your life and the time and it's not right, because I don't know if I mentioned y'all, he had already asked me to be his girlfriend. But like I said, I'm not dating no man that's 15 hours away from me. I can't throw that far. I can't see that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm just not doing it. I don't do long distance relationships anymore. And then two, say if I would, let's just say hypothetically, say if I would have just not talk to anybody clear my roster for this man and i would have waited all of these months until he graduated and yeah he graduated just for me to say oh my gosh i'm with the doc no what if he would have cut me off while i'm waiting and i'm just holding on like i don't know i don't i don't know how y'all think i feel like when you have your own that's not what you're fixated on yes you have to, for me yes you do have to have um money you know you, you just have to have money it costs money up that right there it costs money so of course you do have to have money but that's not the only thing you have to have it's more than just money like y'all see money in here money y'all that you fumble you fumble y'all don't care nothing about integrity y'all don't care nothing about mores all y'all hear is cha -ching, cha -ching. no baby that's just number two maybe three give me one margarita i'm, a, I'm not gonna hold you <laughs> i took a shot um, earlier because I went to a happy hour early and I had took a few, a few little shots so if I was a little jittery during this video that's why your girl got a few shots in her system but um yeah the takeaway from this story is never to wait don't wait on anybody y'all don't wait on a friendship don't wait on a job don't wait on a man don't wait on people because if I would have waited for that man that man still could have left and been with somebody else like if, if you know what I mean Hey y'all, a lot of you guys love the cabin trip that I went on, so I have some very fun and exciting news for you all. For those of you who would love to go on a cabin trip but don't have dependable people to go with, I have the perfect solution. Travel Babes is hosting an all-girls luxury cabin trip in Colorado from December 5th to December 8th, 2024. Your trip will include a personal chef, maid service, meals, activities, ski gear, and more. All of this is provided and all you have to do is show up. Booking is open and slots are limited, so make sure you do not miss out. Bye, y'all.